What's up, everybody, and welcome to In the Crosshairs, presented by Line Sniper, your definitive resource for all things sports betting content and in-game analysis. And we've swapped out one beautiful face for another today. It's your guy, Joey Kanish, filling in the host chair today for Ali Melendez. And with me, I got my guy, j here. We got a full slate of Thursday content coming for you. A lot of football today, a little bit of college ball. But let's check in with you first, my man. How you feeling today, j What's going on, brother? You ready to chop it up? You know, maybe I hit sunny California, enjoying the, the nice weather, and looking forward to uh, capping a nice weekend worth of, uh, of football, both on the college level and, of course, a little NFL. Well, it's not sunny or warm or any of those things here. So, uh, but I'll tell you what is warm. The NFL slate for coming up for this weekend. We had a little matinee game yesterday. What'd you think? Eric? Give me the quick thought. Steelers, Ravens, uh, do you enjoy that, baby? You like a little NFL matinee? <laughs> I mean, it was something to look forward to on a Wednesday where, you know, not a lot of sports going on. We had a little uh, evening college basketball to, to you know, uh, soften or wet in our palates, but ultimately that game was awful and it was not an easy watch on the eyes by any means. You had, you know, Robert Griffin out there coming up lame, trying to run an offense that just was not, he's just obviously over the hill. It's not for him. Really poor football, uh, wasn't entertained much by it, but you know, it was something to gamble on. It took a little bit of the uh, Pittsburgh money. So I, you know, had had a little something in it, but ultimately it wasn't, uh, it wasn't anything I want to watch again. Let me just say that. <laughs> no, no, no. But Hey, as you said, something to gamble on. I'll take that any sure. day of the week. Let's get into it, baby. Yep. We got. We're going to start with the rundown here. AFC playoff implications, big game. I see both teams, you know, in the mix in the division. Um, but looking towards, you know, Tennessee potentially can get a stranglehold on the division. Cleveland in the mix for a wild card. We got Browns Titans, one of the bigger AFC games uh, across the league in the weekend. This line opened up Tennessee minus four. It's drifted up. There's been Titans uh, positions and strong money coming in all week. You're seeing Browns plus six trading at a lot of places. Uh, give me your early thoughts here. What you like, Browns, Titans, uh, anything you're looking at in this one? Yeah, you know, I, I have a, an idea on the on the total here. I'm, I'm looking at the under in this game. You know, when you start to handicap unders, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and, and try and anticipate what the game script is going to be, right? So when you look at these two teams, both want to establish the run. That automatically lends itself to an under. When I look at the Browns, and I know you, you might have a position here in a second, but when you're looking at the Browns getting Miles Garrett back, that should absolutely help them limit the Titans offense. It has been really solid throughout the year. Wonderful third down conversions, but that is because they, they put themselves in short third downs with Derrick Henry absolutely smashing people in the face all season long. This is his time of the year, but I think a fresh Miles Garrett helps them on that side of the ball. When you look at the Browns offensively, you know, they're going to run. They have two of the best running backs in the league. They want to take the ball out of Baker's Makefield's hands for uh, really, you know, viable reasons. And, you know, the Tennessee <laughs> defense hasn't been super solid. But, again, when you have two teams who are going to run the ball, that clock is going to be moving. We saw what happened with Denver uh, and, uh, you know, playing this last week with no quarterback. They ran the ball. That game was over an hour before any other game was. You're looking at the same kind of situation here. Slow the ball down. Take it out of the air. I love the under here. And I think that lends itself uh, maybe to a Cleveland side that you'd like as well, right? No, I agree. I, I'm, I'm totally with you there uh, as far as back in the under. And now this, you know, when it opened up at four for me, I, I thought line was about right. Now that it's getting, uh, you know, it, it's gotten to, you know, a key here at some places around six. That was the buying point. Uh, I, I'm not going to say it's, you know, uh, one of my bigger positions of the year or anything. Um, but I did buy uh, on a little Browns plus six. Uh, I, you know, and, and agree with what you're saying. Garrett back. The defense, I think they can limit Tennessee a little bit. You you know, as it's a game script, if Cleveland can get out and run the ball a bit on a Tennessee defense that I don't have, you know, a ton of respect for, I think they can control the game a little bit um, and, and get down to one of those one possession games um, where you're getting six points. Uh, I, like I said, I made this, you know, around four, uh, you know, at four and a half, it, it wasn't enough. But when it ticked up to the six, uh, that was the point. I think you saw some resistance there. Not a game that really has any chance of getting a seven. So I think you'll see this right around, you know, trend between five and six in the Vegas zone there. If you can get a six, play for me on the Browns there. Uh, and as I said, Jamez likes the under. I like that a lot as well. So 
Let's roll now to one of the NFC big game. We rolled with the AFC contender game. Now we're going over to a big NFC West divisional game. A couple of teams here fighting for jockeying for position. Both, you know, looking at a wild card. Seattle looks to be in, in control and division. But the next two contenders, we've got Rams, Cardinals, Goff, Murray, um, you know, both of the, this, this might be kind of one of those games that decides, uh, you know, you know, who's getting in here as far as playoff implications. What do you see from me here? Do you have anything side total Rams cards? What you got? You know, so this is actually one of my, my, my bigger plays of the week, to be honest. So the West coast, you know, in, in out here in the, in the NFC West, it, it, it's a mess, right? <laughs> You've got to throw your numbers out first and foremost. The way it works is Shanahan owns Carol, Carol, yeah, Shanahan owns Carol. Uh, you know, you got McVay who owns Shanahan and then they all they're you know, the, and then you, you have, uh, your 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 McVeigh who has owned Kingsbury, so they just all beat each other up. That's pretty much the way it works, and I expect that fully here. You're looking at a Cardinals team with Kyler Murray, who was clearly hurt. Uh, what the, what he showed last week, he was he was hesitant to run. The game plan was completely scripted around keeping him healthy. I don't like what I see out of him. And you know, you're coming off a Rand team that you're buying low on. They didn't look well last. They didn't look good last week. That L was a pretty bad one. And honestly, they have dominated this Cardinals team. They know what how to what to do to stop this. Uh, you know, quote unquote air raid. Although you know, I, I have. A questions of whether if it's a true error rate or not at this point with the way that they're scripting the games for Kyler. But generally Perfect. speaking, the Rams, the Rams, I think, are a better team. You're going to be able to see Aaron Donald disrupt Kyler Murray, disrupt what they're going to be doing on offense. No real home field advantage considering, you know, there are no fans. So I think this is a great buy low spot on the Rams, and they have just simply owned Arizona. When you look at it, my numbers don't necessarily say this, but when you're in the NFC West, you kind of have to throw those numbers out the door. These coaches have good plans against the certain teams to make it, so it makes it difficult to do what they want to do. And you're getting the Rams. I have it under 2.5. I'm not sure you'll know a little bit better if it's moved up to 3, but I love the 2.5. I love taking that Rams number. I think they probably beat them pretty handily. You know, and this, I don't know what's going on. I, 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 we're all, we're on the same page today. I, I, I want to fight you. I want to go. Boring I show. We got to real something. Um, but I, 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 I can't do nothing but agree with you. It's another one. Uh, last week on the look aheads, this actually opened Rams plus one to pick. Um, I bought up as much look ahead as, as I could. Uh, you know, the limits aren't great on that stuff, but was able to scoop, uh, you know, a decent amount last week. And I agree with you. This is now. It has, you know, ticked up to a juice three at some places. There are two and a half surrounds. Um, but I, 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 I love this under three. I totally agree with you. It, it, it's you look at the historic thing of the matchup. I, you know, DraftKings right now it is a juice two and a half minus one twenty four on the Rams. Um, you can find anything, you know, two and a half minus one fifteen in that out in the market. Uh, that that's an absolute buy for me. I think the Rams have gotten healthier. Their defense has come on. Um, I mean, Aaron Donald, some of the, I, I really, I thought this year would be the year where, you know, he, he would still be a great player, but would start, you know, uh, trending downward somewhat from the peak. I, I mean, he's defensive player of the year again for me. I, I, he was just absolutely insane last week. Um, and, and some of the play that he's looked, Jalen Ramsey, I think is the best corner in football right now. Their defense is lined up and. You know, the, when the Rams have had trouble, it's against teams that can give Goff a lot of problems. Uh, Arizona's defense, for me, it, this isn't that kind of team. They lost Chandler Jones. Patrick Peterson isn't the same player he once was. They don't have a lot of difference makers. I like Vance Jones. He's been able to kind of make chicken salad with some of the scheme. Um, but this isn't a team that I think can give, you know, Goff uh, the kind of problems that, it, you know, a lot of other teams can. So, for me, I, I'm with you. Rams, lay it. Anything under three is a nice play there. Let's flip yeah. to here. Yeah. NFL pick of the week. I, I've teed you up on a couple of games here. I'm giving you the full board, baby. Anything across the slate that you like this Sunday uh, or, hey, hey, go into Monday, go into Tuesday. We got NFL games almost every day of the week nowadays. Um, throw me something you like here, your NFL play of the week uh, coming up for this weekend or Monday or Tuesday. And for the record, I love NFL every single day, by the way. They just play Saturdays. Might as well play Fridays. I mean, <laughs> I you give it you. We might as well have it every single day. They have enough teams. Let's go, man. <laughs> so, and if you play of the day, I'm, I'm looking at the Raiders uh, covering anything you can possibly find against the worst team of in, in a long time, the Jets. We talked, uh, you know, I think it was like week four, week five, whether this team might go uh, un, without a win. It's looking more and more likely like that might be the case. I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> we all laid. We, we, we didn't want any part of that then. I think we might want to start sniffing some of that now because they're going to go up against a Raiders team this week that absolutely laid an egg in Atlanta. We all knew that was going to happen. I don't know a single guy who wasn't on Atlanta in that spot. It was a terrible situational spot for the Raiders coming off a hard-fought loss against the Chiefs. It's just hard to go across country and keep that kind of intensity up, and they laid an egg. Very expected. I think we all made some money on that. This is not the time to, to, to get off this train, though. They're going to go into a, against a Jets defense that is absolutely decimated. They have no pass rush. They have, they're losing. They're missing their best cornerback. And let's be honest, the Raiders are probably a top five, top seven uh, uh, offensive unit in the NFL. They haven't been stopped other than I'm just pretending like last week did not happen and assessing it from here. You're looking at whether or not uh, Josh Jacobs plays or not does not matter. This team, they will need to be throwing the ball all over this Jets defense that has essentially quit on Adam Gase. I mean, he's, he's a lame duck at this point, right? So – on the defensive side of the football, it doesn't matter. The Jets can't move the ball anyways. I'm laying the eight. I'm teasing it down. I like the team total over. You could just go across the board, baby. Just scatter the entire board with, with this Raiders team that will absolutely decimate the Jets, who have absolutely they have no chance, and they might not win a game the entire season. So lay the eight, team total, tease it, all of it. No, it's funny because I remember that was me and you talking about that, pro, you know, I would say, what it was, six weeks ago or something. Um, and I thought this Jets team just, you know, it wasn't the mold of an 0-16 team. I thought they had it. But you look at some of the injuries they've had, the defense has fallen apart. And now even getting the receivers and Sam Darnold back, uh, I mean, three points last week and just a, a completely what, pathetic effort. Um, you know, last, I, I, I it, 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 exactly. I mean, you say you know, I hate the angle shooting that, but this team has you know absolute, and they're only one game ahead of the Jets to keep the number one pick, so they need to keep losing. Um, to lose. <laughs> and they have got the man for the job at the helm there uh, with Adam Gase for uh, finishing out this season. Um, for me, I'm gonna go, and I hate, and again, I know everybody doesn't want to go against you know the legend Patrick Mahomes. I love him like he's a family member of mine. Uh, I love watching him. I think two touchdowns here for, you know, the Broncos was trading around 14 and low. It's come down to 13 and a half some spots. I played 14. There's still some 14s out there. I know what happened last week with the Broncos and everybody. I think there's a little bit of market overreaction here to that. Uh, I, I mean, I don't – you haven't seen a scenario in modern NFL history where a team – went into a game without legitimately having no quarterback. Um, I thought their defense under the circumstances played relatively well um, until they just got gassed in the second half and that that scoreline wasn't totally indicative uh, of how good their defense played. Um, you look at the Chiefs as well. They've When they've gotten on to – they've been – a team here when they've gotten leads to kind of take their foot off the gas pedal, manage the clock, slow the pace down. Um, so when they're in these high shooting games, uh, they, they've got a propensity to kind of let the other team either back into it or slow down. Um, so for me as a big dog, I like the Broncos defense. You're getting Drew Lockback, who by no means I'm going to tell you he was a great quarterback, but he's an actual NFL quarterback. Unlike that person that they, unlike Kintun who they played last week. Um, Broncos offense, I think, can do enough uh, to at least, you know, put some points on the board here uh, and stay within stay within shape. And you just look at how the Chiefs have kind of managed the season, managed the game. They haven't been, you know, I, I would be surprised here to see, you know, a 21, 24 point victory. So give me the Broncos on the 14. Um, I think they're getting a little bit, you know, this was, you know, if they're playing this game two weeks ago, I think it's in the 11 and a half mold. Uh, two touchdowns for me is just too much. We yeah, I agree, NFL. man. I no, hit me, hit me, hit me. You like that one? You like well, that one? Are we, are we on the same page again? We are, and I'm just going to say, that in, in being, I'm, I'm a Raiders fan. NFC, you know, I pay attention to the, to the AFC West. Uh, Andy Reid goes into his his in the back of his of his file drawer and he grabs out the shitty playbook for these kind of games and he because he's not going to give them any anything in, in terms of any of the fancy plays any of the well designed stuff he's going to run the fucking random the, you know the general st scheme because they, that's all they have to do to beat this Broncos team so again I I want to disagree with you man but I absolutely love that no doubt about it nope 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 that's a, that's a nice one there I like that I like that read as well on the on the read he, he had the Chiefs have managed this season like so well um uh from not only you know whether the COVID or an injury perspective but just not having to it, it's like they've made you know it's like the easiest 10 and 1 I can remember in NFL history so we'll see if they can uh snipe the one seed from the Steelers but let's shift over here we've talked NFL we've hit you with the prime games let's go a little NCAA futures market here now I know we we know we we've been a little light on the the basketball future. Me and you are more of a you know in the NCAA football futures guy. I've got one that that I'm kind of looking at buying. Give me anything you got, whether it be 
futures wise, uh, football season, or if you see anything, I know you're, you know, an out West Pac 12 guy, anything in the futures market, either college football, college basketball that uh, you're buying up right now. Yeah, you know, so one of my favorite things to do uh, throughout the NCAA basketball season is, is just pick off some random little, uh, you know, NCAA futures to win the, the championship uh, numbers that are just incorrect. And then at the end, at the start of, of March Madness, you have this nice portfolio of teams. You should have most of them covered from, you know, the the, the one through three seeds because that's, you know, that's where the champion's going to come from. The ones you don't have covered, you go ahead and get in a couple pools. You put those guys as the winner in the pool and boom, you, I mean, you're basically, you're guaranteed to make at least a little bit of profit. So this is one of my favorite things to do. And when I do it, I need to go to guys who know more about the NCAA, NCAA football or NCAA basketball than I do. My guy Eli gave me this one, so I'm going to pass it on to you guys. West Virginia, 40-1 to to win the NCAA championship. This is a team that is excellent offensive rebounding team, and we watched them last night. Before I, before I bet this, I wanted to see how they stacked up against Gonzaga, which is a game there was nothing else on, so fuck, I had to bet something. So that was what I bet, actually. Yep. I bet West Virginia with, with, the, with the nine. <laughs> so, But when we're watching that game, they got out to a great lead, and they played with them blow for blow until the end. When, I mean, Gonzaga's are obviously they're the best team in the country, no doubt about that. They went blow for blow until about the two-minute mark uh, left in, the, in that second half when, you know, getting got away from them a little bit. But with that being said, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country huggins defenses are always wonderful in the half court and when you're in the tournament that's what you need second chance points and to be able to stop in the half court you're looking at a, a big 12 Baylor is obviously really good. Texas, very solid. But, you know, Kansas is down this year. Kansas State is down this year. So they should be able to get enough wins to get into that, uh, you know, that second or third seed, which is what we're looking for in a futures market when we talk about the NCAA tournament. So West Virginia, 40 to 1, pretty much across the board, not too hard to find. I think you're going to get a, th a three seed out of this team. And Huggins in the tournament with the way that he can scheme defensively and they have enough offensive weapons to score. Shit, they put up 82 last night on Gonzaga. They can score, okay? So. When I, and I saw everything I needed to see from them last night. Love that as a futures bet in the NCAA tournament. No, I like that a lot. I, you know, I actually I scooped that game last night as well. Uh, you know, I don't watch too much college basketball, but, uh, you know, it's kind of checking that out. Hey, it, it was competitive. You know, they, they I mean, they had a lead in the first time. They kind of got away from them today. They didn't get enough stops down the stretch. But, yeah, it was – I mean, that's a team there, 40 to 50 to 1 that's out there that played with, you know, by – not by or none the best team in the country um yeah. and, and was able to run with them you know for there so no i agree with you there that um especially at those prices those i, I would agree will not be around come tournament time you'll, you'll be looking at them you know they have the season we think they can have it's more 15 to 1 or something come the tournament Agreed. so uh i agree with you buying those up now uh before that for me i'm gonna go a little bit you know we talked about it i talked about it a little bit with danny last week um now for me it, with what's looking like so Ohio State is going to be, it's by all means, going to play this week. Even if the game is canceled against Michigan, the way that the Big Ten is setting up championship week is even if they don't get in the Big Ten championship game, they would then line up to play Wisconsin the way it's heading now. So you'd get Ohio State playing this week. And playing the wake yet, yeah, regardless of the you know, Big Ten rules, whether they play or not, they'll get a game next week. If they can get in, they fudge some things and they get in the, the Michigan game. You know, they destroy Michigan, they get in the Big Ten championship. Even if they don't get that game in, they'll line up against Wisconsin in the championship game week. That, to me, is enough assuming they win those games, to get them in the playoffs 100%. You've seen plus 550 now. That number is ticked up. You know, it, all that's really happened here is, is there been a little bit of a, you know, a scare of would they be able to get enough games in. It's looking like if they played this week, um, then I don't have any concerns about them being, you know, healthy enough to play then the following week um, or the week after in, in the, either a championship game or Wisconsin. And now a number that was, you know, 250 or 3-1 to one is now sitting out there plus 550 for Ohio State to win and get at. I think they're going to get in the playoff. By all means, if they're healthy enough to play this week, they'll get enough games in. Uh, the committee's not going to leave the out and undefeated Ohio State team, um, especially with the way they've looked. And this is a team to me, I'm not going to say they're, you know, I don't have them up there, you know, power ranked with, with Bama, but they're the team that that's not going to be, lay, you know, I had any more of a three, four point dog um, uh, in a playoff rate. And depending on who they get seated up against, you know, in the first game, could even be a, a favorite the way it lines up, uh, depending on what happens with, Notre Dame and Clemson as such. But for me, Ohio State plus 550 to win the Natty. It's a, I've been waiting all year for a number on Ohio <laughs> State to think. I agree with that. The defense has not looked um, what I would say is elite, but I think it's getting better. They've got elite players on offense, NFL talent all over the roster. Um, and, and, like, this is the only – there's three teams that I think can realistically 
win the national championship. Alabama, Clemson, and Ohio State. The other two are two to one or under. For me, Ohio State plus 550 is getting my money here uh, now that I feel like confident enough that they'll get the games in uh, to be able to get a playoff berth. Let's flip over now. NCAA Futures. You think we're going to go? You think you think Joey Kinnish is going to host the show? We're not going to talk about NCAA picks of the week. Give me what you got, uh, NCAA football. We got some college ball this weekend. I know we've had a bunch of cancellations, but there's still a nice slate. We still got a nice slate. There's still enough games uh, to get a good Saturday out of. What you got for me here on the gridiron NCAA college football this weekend? Absolutely, man. We're going to come out west for the first one. You know, there, there's a there's a line out there you're that just, it, it doesn't make a whole me out west with the game here. I, I can't believe you're going back to all about west. It's crazy, I know. We're going back to all on you. It's a wild, it's a wild thing. I don't even know what. <laughs> so we're gonna come out west, <laughs> man. And, and look, there's a there's a there's a total out there that I, I have seven points wrong, and, and this is one of my biggest edges. I told myself I would not bet, I would not stake more than just my normal one one unit stake on any game due, due to the COVID uncertainties. That was just a rule that I made at the beginning of the season. I'm going to stick with that, but this is by far the biggest edge I've had all season. Okay, you're looking at an Arizona Wildcats team. That is this host air that is hosting Colorado Buffaloes. All right. This this total is opened at 59 and a half. If these teams get anywhere near that, I would be absolutely shocked. Okay. You're looking at a, a Colorado team very stout up front um in, in, their, in their front seven, returned a bunch of starters, had a lot of questions coming into the season with Jarrell as the new head coach, how they would actually be able to transition when the practices. They've been absolutely phenomenal. He's the coach of the year in the Pac-12 thus far. Uh, well, well, uh, yeah. Jonathan says maybe, but either way, when you look at the Colorado team, they are starting as a guy who played safety at quarterback last year. They want to run the football. They want to slow the game down. We saw them play San Diego State and only put up 20 on a team that is not very good at San Diego State. But on the flip side of that, their defense is phenomenal. San Diego State did not have – they didn't move the ball against uh, against uh, the Buffalo's front seven. You're going to – and that is going to bode well against an Arizona team that absolutely is terrible on offense. They will attempt to run the ball. They won't be able to, and they can't throw. Gannell is a, is a terrible quarterback. On the flip side of that, Arizona has a little bit up front to be able to slow down a Buffalo team that's not overly uh, talented offensively. Uh, 60 to me is just a crazy number. I make this 52, and you can still get 58s out there. Uh, that, if it's anywhere close to 60, I will I'd probably just stop betting call college football because it, I have my numbers are just way wrong if, if that's the case. These teams will slow the game down, and Colorado will dictate the pace. They're seven-point favorites on the road, and they will dictate in, in the trenches – the game is going to be slowed down. It's going to be a, a running game. I don't know how the hell these teams get that high. I love an under them. No, I, I like that. Hey, we, we are just in lockstep on that. I know some <laughs> uh, actual big groups that uh, actually play. You know, I saw when you filled out the show sheet last night, it was 59 and a half. Uh, some serious groups hit that this morning, uh, and now we're sitting 58. I agree with you. It, it would still buy anything. You know, I, I said you made it 51. I had, you know, some guys that uh, worked with me have made it a little bit higher, but anything to 57, real, real good. Um, I agree with that. And I think that'll keep coming down. You know, we have 58 in the market now. Wouldn't surprise, especially because Grant Gannell, not a lot to play. I believe I saw a game time decision as far as his status, yeah. uh, the latest update, especially if he's out. I think you'll see this crash to, to more where your number in the in the low 50s. Uh, you're talking yeah, about, 50, you know, 50, 50 is my, is my guess work. Yep, yep. So for me, uh, no, that's one that I think you want to buy right now. Um, another one, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna go out west. You think you you think you're gonna go out west or not? I'm gonna go out west here. Um, okay. and, and get a game here. Little change of venue here. This was my my San Jose man, Jose Spartans here. And now this was a game that was supposed to be in San Jose. Little bit of uh, you know, like I was like California COVID restrictions. They can't play it in San Jose anymore. So we're taking they took it out to Honolulu, baby. They, they said flip that. We're going to Hawaii. That is a great decision anyway. They should have played the game. I'm I'm San Jose. I'm loving this, the fact that I'm getting all Hawaii regardless. However, this was a game that was San Jose minus six ish in the market uh, as a favorite when the game was at home. It flipped all the way when they did the venue change uh, to San Jose plus one. Oh, oh, Hawaii is a small favorite for me. That's too much, too much of an overreaction. I know there's a time change. I know it's you know the travel is, isn't you know. Uh, a walk in the park getting there. I did see San Jose was able to, they were able to get some practices in before they flew out. They like left the county and went to the next county over to, at some high school field to be able to practice. Um, this has been <laughs> a buy team. Here, this is the crazy shit that happened. <laughs> it's been a buy team from here all year. Um, I, I think they, they they were buy early. I, I'm still going to buy. It wasn't a game I was going to touch when they were, you know, a six point favorite at home. Uh, I, I think this is too much of an overreaction for me uh, when I'm not putting in a bunch of home field advantages this year. So I get that, that there's a travel aspect, but bottom line is 
I've got San Jose as a better team than Hawaii. I'm not big on the Hawaii team this year. Uh, so give me, I think right now you can get money line right around minus 115 as a consensus. So give me Man Jose, baby. I'm taking him again, uh, and I'm taking him on the island. I know some funny, so late night on the island, some some interesting things can happen. But uh, I'll roll the dice that uh, the Hawaii boosters don't have too much money <laughs> on this, this weekend. I, I can't, I can't wait with- to... to- a little, a little, uh, a little Mac, a little after, after dark whack is always where you want to be, man. I'll tell you that. And what they have done, what they have done with that San Jose State program from where they were three years ago is nothing short of remarkable. Let's just say that right now. No, tremendous. I, I mean, here's a team that was, you know, no talent, one two win team uh, to now a team that that's, you know, in the, in the thick of it in the, the Mountain West out there. Um, well, anyway. I don't know this game. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's not right. Hey, we're, we're we're buying, we're buying. So I love it. Listen, I don't know if I, I you know, watching the other these Hawaii games like on Spectrum Sports now. So actually, getting a hold of these can be a little challenging. But if you're up late night, tune into some Man Jose Hawaii football as uh, yes, it gets there at at midnight Eastern. All right, we've gone NFL, we've gone NCAA, we sprinkled a little college basketball. Just give me the straight up best bet. Of the weekend, anything, any sport, anywhere you want to go with it. Um, I, I honestly, I think I, you, you can switch it up from the Arizona Colorado under, but I like that a lot. So if, if you want to double up on that one, we'll we'll call this aside. But what else you got for me uh, as far as uh, we'll call it best bet number two? Yeah, you know, I have another under out west. You know, it's shocking. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw another Pac-12 game. I, I love watching this conference. Obviously, I'll sit there and watch every single game. So, I'm I'm coming back out west for another under UCLA Arizona State. It's right around 55 and a half, I believe, right now. You're looking at a UCLA team that has more or less flipped the script on what I what I expected from them. I did not see this defense stepping up like it has. They have played good defense this year, and it's actually relatively fun to watch. You know, whatever Chip Kelly was trying to do the first two years, it's finally taking hold with this team offensively they are definitely still you know when you have when you have a quarterback who turns the ball over you know as, as much as D, uh, dtr does you need to be a little sketchy on, on what you have arizona state they haven't played in three weeks there's a lot of continuity issues that will affect the offense first i don't expect them to be able to move the ball with Jaden daniels all that much considering they have absolutely no practice time absolutely no playing time it's the first game they played in shoot since since week one right they do have a lot of talent on that defensive side of the football, and they are very well coached as well. I think they will be able to slow down UCLA offense. UCLA offense is just as plainly not that, not that not super incredible by any means. I mean, they're not out there throwing up 40, 50 points a game. And I don't think Arizona State is going to be able to move the ball in this UCLA defense. This is going to be this this game will take place between the 30s. I don't expect a lot of red zone possessions. It's going to be done on the ground. And I think you're going to see some turnovers, most likely in the red zone from two quarterbacks who are prone to do that. So when I'm looking at a 55 and a half, that's just way too many points for these two teams to get to, especially considering the layoff on Arizona State side and the defensive intensity that UCLA has shown thus far in the season under 55 and a half UCLA Arizona State. Nope, nope, nope. That's a good. It'll be interesting to see uh, what the Sun Devils kind of come out with here. With this. you know, you get these these layoffs all season where teams are off for three, four, five weeks, yeah. and you don't know like what 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 are they coming out with? Who's still you know who's still on the roster? Who's still out with contract tracing? Um, <laughs> quite the season, quite the season. In another conference here, I'm gonna go best bet. Um, in my in my I love this conference. The Sun Belt, baby. Some Friday night Sun Belt. I mean, this is, you know, this is cream. Before Coastal became, you know, Coastal, let me tell you, something. Coastal BYU on the weekend. This is my best bet, but Coastal BYU, you're probably the most excited I've been for a football game in three years. But we're going Friday <laughs> night Coastal Sun Belt. <laughs> you know, I love some Coastal. But we're going Friday night Sun Belt, Louisiana, Laffy Taffy, baby. Lafayette versus App State, two of the juggernauts in the Sun Belt. Um, I am loaded up on, on Louisiana, on Laffey here, uh, plus three. I got some three and a half early. I bought some some more three yesterday. Um, I, I just think Appalachian State ha- has been kind of working off of their, their name. They've been able to beat up on some of the peasants in the conference, but they got soundly outplayed by Coastal. Um, this is not the same, you know, at your, your App State team of the last five years. I think they're significantly uh, – I've, I've downgraded them a touch. Uh, they're not the team that, that's gone into some of these, you know, bowl games and been able to play with Power 5 opponents. Um and Louise, you know, the raging Cajuns here, quietly, they started off a little. This was a team that, you know, was by all means, they were supposed to win the division. They were going to contend. They were going to try. They started off slow. Um, and now they've been really putting it together here. Uh, I like Louisiana Lafayette here. Uh, I make them actually a short favorite in this game. 
I've got plus three. I think they take this baby outright. Uh, so for me, I, I, App State has been a team that I, and I faded a few games here. Uh, they have looked impressive against the dregs of the conference, but when you put putting up against the real deal this year, uh, they have not shown up. So give me Louisiana Lafayette plus three. Don't worry to sprinkle a little money line there on a Friday night fun belt special. So my man, yeah. Jay Maz, what'd you think, baby? The boys club here on a Thursday here, little Thursday, Thursday. Hey, uh, but you know, hey, hey, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, my man. This was good stuff. I, I tell you what, we're either, we're either going to have a big weekend or we're going to be, you know, in the board <laughs> after with how much we agreed on, on, on the same page today. It. So, I, you know, I hate agreeing <laughs> with you. <laughs> that, 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 that comes down to it. When you're right, you're right. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I, hey, 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 I hear you, I hear you. I appreciate the time, my man. Always good chopping it up. Okay. Um, hey, we'll wrap We'll wrap for a Thursday here. This was, you know, we had NFL, we had NCAA, we had college basketball, best bets. Good luck to you out there, all our favorite sports bettors on the weekend. This was in the crosshairs. Joey Kinish filling in for our girl, Allie Melendez here. Jay Math, nice enough to join us. Allie will be back next week, uh, and we'll be back to a little bit of our, you know, traditional format here. But today we had a boys take over, two versus two. Thank you for joining us on In the Crosshairs, presented by Lion Sniper, your definitive resource for sports betting content and game analysis. For Jay Maz over there, I'm Joey Kinish. We'll see you next week.